a favorite song of mine that was introduced to me by a colleague that we'd like to share with you.
Zacchaeus is in a world that is broken. We all know about broken worlds. Zacchaeus is living as a Jew under Roman occupation and trying to figure out along with everyone else how the heck that works. And so he chooses to just live into the brokenness and where there is power to join with to try to figure out a way up forward. Now others, there are zealots who have decided, uh-uh, and they will fight it with all they have and they're the revolutionaries of their time, the rebels. And then we have others like the Essenes who are just not gonna have anything to do with the brokenness and there's no hope for it anyways and so they're gonna remove themselves and isolate themselves and just make it through the best they can separate and removed. How do we find a way forward in the midst of brokenness? Jericho is a huge city. Herod had a grand palace there. There were lots of taxes to be collected. And Zacchaeus wasn't just a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector, which means he had an entire network of underlings going out and collecting the monies for him and reporting back. Read into that a whole nother layer of unfairness in which the underlings were taking more than what Zacchaeus needed so they could get some, the more that Zacchaeus was taking so that he could get some before it went on to Rome. This is a messed up, broken system that's causing a whole crap load of harm for everyone. And then comes Jesus. And there's whispers coming in because he's been approaching Jericho and there was a blind man who cried out for him and was healed and was given sight. And so we have to wonder what was going on in Zacchaeus' heart and mind up until then. Because he had gotten to the point where he had a whole network of people who could do his dirty work for him so that he never had to be seen or get insulted again. He just got to reap the benefits of the money. But do you remember last week's text of a certain Pharisee and a certain tax collector in the temple praying? And the Pharisee, thank God I am not like that tax collector because I fast and I give 10% of all that I receive. It's a miracle that Zacchaeus stepped out of his house that day and risked, because there were crowds, right? It wasn't even just a usual marketplace day. It was a whole bunch of extra people out for the same reason he was out, to figure out and see what was happening. Can we blame him for choosing a sycamore tree to hide in? But then the worst thing happens, right? Like he's got his boundaries set so that he can see without being seen. There's no risk for him. And then what happens? Zacchaeus, everybody, you come, really? Come on, we know this by now. <laughs> Zacchaeus. You come down. Okay, y'all need lessons from Kaylee. Just meet her after service. <laughs> and think of what that moment of sheer terror was like. First of all, there's just shock. Like, who, what, what's speaking to me? Wait, that's my name? What? He does it. What? And then terror. Come down in front in the midst of all of these people so that I can be made a public display and a mockery? But that's not what happens, right? For I'm going to your house today. Now, confirmands, middle schoolers, high schoolers, you know how serious and how big this thing is better than anyone else. We're talking about an honor-shame society in terms of who you are with gives you your status. So you know the lunchroom setup and you know the group setup at school, right? And what tables you sit at and what tables you don't sit at if you want to be able to be anyone at any point of time in your school career. That was what was happening here. All of a sudden, there is this huge honor and moment of dignity for Zacchaeus. And everyone else is not pleased. They'll be grumbling, like, 
what is that? I thought he was cool, but he's going home with that guy? I don't think so. Or what is this really about Zacchaeus? And then there are going to be families there who haven't eaten that day because they didn't have any money because of Zacchaeus to buy food at Margaret. And that's a for serious justice anger issue. But yet in that moment, in that space of dignity, in that extension of honor, something unlocked in Zacchaeus that he had kept tight down. And he knew the Jewish law. He knew he wasn't to cheat out his sisters and brothers. He knew that if he did, he was to repay fourfold. He knew all of that before Jesus came on the scene. But in that one extension, something happened that gave Zacchaeus the power to act on what he knew. Instead of giving up hope, instead of just letting the system be the system and using its power and working it, instead of whatever rationalization and web that he had set up for himself of why he was doing what he was doing, all of a sudden, all of those chains fell off. And he saw clearly and he acted decisively. He gave away a half, 50% of all of his wealth to the poor in his city. <laughs> Tax collector in the temple, I give 10%. <laughs> and in addition, repaid specifically those he had stolen from four times as much. And that was when Jesus declared that salvation had come. Not when he had said the magical formula of, I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior, or I will follow you, or I will invite you to my house. It was in the wholeness. Yes, there was a vertical relationship with Christ, but there was also a horizontal relationship with his city, with his community. And salvation came when there was wholeness. When both of those spheres came together. And so salvation didn't happen just for Zacchaeus that day. It happened for the entire city of Jericho. Can you imagine the hope and the power of that day? You wake up, you haven't been able to feed, you're in an awful place, and the very guy who has done all of this and made life this awful has now done a complete reversal and given you everything you need, not just for that day, but for the year. And not just for you, but for the entire city. Entire city full of people who were hungry that are now fed. And we all know, at least I know, what I can do when I'm hungry and I know what I can do when I'm fed. And the entire city benefits from that added power all of a sudden being added to its life. Zacchaeus goes from wolf to shepherd in one encounter with Christ. He wasn't just transformed into a sheep, into a disciple. He was transformed into a shepherd, into a leader, into a model of what it means to follow Christ. This is a story that teaches us what salvation means. And as we prepare to send and walk with our confirmands on their journey of figuring out salvation and what this story and what it means for them and their lives, we journey with them. And we journey with them not just with our hearts and our souls and our minds, but with our ties and with our offerings that makes Bill's position, that makes this program even possible. If we can't hear it from the gospel today, we can hear it from Hello, Dolly. Did anyone else grow up their grandmas watching musicals? My dear old Ephraim used to say that money, please pardon the expression, is like manure. For to do anything good, you got to spread it around so that things can grow. And so we promise to grow with you, and for you, and because of you. 
And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at what it means um, to give our offerings and to make a tithe and to give financially um, to the church, but also to other places of need in our midst. And yes, for our church here, it's always going to be a logistical bit of it helps us be much better stewards and do our due diligence with preparing our budget and preparing our year ahead of us. And that will always be a part of the conversation. But the heart of the conversation is how we understand salvation and how we respond to God's good news and God's blessing and God's hope in our lives. We will always have the choice as disciples to live according to the Roman system or to live according to God's system. And it is not an easy choice because there is a lot of power in the Roman system and there's a lot of legitimate fear from the brokenness of this system. But Zacchaeus asks us today to follow Christ as he did to find the hope, and most importantly, find the joy that we can have. Zacchaeus went from wealthy man to not at all in one day, but had more joy, a happy man was he, than I would bet he had had in all of his years of wealth because of his clarity of who he was and who God was and the wholeness that he was able to feel in that leap of faith, not just in his life, but in the life of the city around him. Greater things have yet to be done in our city. There is no one like our God who will call us out when we least want to be. But there is also no one like our God who can bring about a transformation that is not only ours, but is for our entire city and for an entire system and way of living. So may we be in prayer about where we give our power and whether we're doing a little bit more hoarding than we ought. And if we take one step of faith and do a little bit more spreading of that manure of what can grow in our own lives and in our city. Our youth are leading the way and trick-or-treating so that others might eat as we speak. What does it look like to spend as much money as we did on candy um, for something that someone needs for survival, for another food and for another meal on the table? We have a food pantry that's a perfect vehicle to do that. We have Barbara Jones working with UCAN, our United Church Assistant Network, so that we help others when they just can't make that electric bill or another something happens. And we have a community here that has resources that we have shared one with another to encourage each other in this journey. So I would ask for a financial commitment this coming week to review where we have been hoarding and to look at that in faith and in prayer to give a piece over of that to what God can do in sharing it and spreading it around. We have a closing hymn to sing, um, something that I grew up with my family. Pass it on. It only takes a spark, just one little piece, and let's see what God can do. <laughs>